So thank you, thank you, Hagar. So just to kick off for a panel discussions, let me highlight um, three forces underpinning change in, the, in this industry. So the three forces I like to discuss are politics, competition, and, uh, and customer value. First, first, politics, there's no wide public recognition that the environmental impact of uh, cars is not always positive. Pollution, uh, congest traffic congestion, road safety issues are high on the agenda. So something needs to change, and there is uh, political faith that technology is part of the solution. So that's really a strong call for stricter regulations and we see regulations introduced month after month, and this impact the, uh, the industry. This is also a strong incentive for the development of alternatives to the private car, uh, privately owned cars, at least in big cities. Um, and of course, the example could be shared autonomous capsules, the, the robot taxis. So what's new is that the big auto companies, the OEMs, they are no longer driving the political agenda, at least uh, in Europe. It's clear to me that they have lost influence to env environmental advocacy groups, and this has many, uh, many, many consequences. First, regulation is no accelerating change in the industry and not, not moderating it as, as usual. Then politics more and more influence technical decisions. Electrification is a must. Uh, diesel may remain relevant for certain applications, such as for buses, but diesel is uh, socially and politically dead. Um, and uh, so we see uh, decisions on regulation taken without any consideration to the affordability of this technology for the general public. This is a, certainly a key risk for the profitability of established OEMs and the piece of change, so there is a significant opportunity for, for new players. Then competition. Uh, of course, in, in competition, uh, my point here is that we don't know uh, where the vertical integration of the uh, industry will be in, uh, in a few years. Technology is really changing the way auto players compete. Uh, most advanced technologies are developed uh, by independent companies, of course, and they are developed sometimes outside of the auto industry. For example, battery coming from the chemical industry. There are very hard decisions to take on whether to integrate, cooperate, or, or compete. For example, uh, uh, on electrical batteries, the key question is whether this, uh, the supply of these batteries will become a commodity or um, or well, commodity, so meaning fair prices for everyone, or whether this will become a decisive competitive advantages for the players having invested in the right place. I can make the same comments about the autonomous uh, vehicles. Everything depends on the advanced electronic sensors, artificial intelligence, and uh, knowledge. So for the the big auto companies, the question is where to compete and where to cooperate with digital players knowing that financially digital players are really in a completely uh, different league. In the last, in the last KPMG uh, study, you will read that uh, now the top 50 auto companies have a market capitalization of about 20%, only 20% of the top 15 uh, digital uh, companies. And whatever this figure is just half of what it was just a few years ago. Then my last point is about, uh, about customer, uh, customer value. Technology allows to improve the automotive product. That's the traditional way to introduce change in, the, in this industry, but also to build customer-centric solutions designed to improve the customer's experience of, uh, of mobility. And for OEMs, for the big auto companies, Shifting focus from product value to customer value is really a steep change. Uh, first, that's a threat to brand loyalty. Uh, since I have down downloaded Waze on my iPhone, I no longer use uh, the information on my car's dashboard. Maybe I need to change my car, but that, that's what happened. 
And, and second, the focus on services will uh, really transform the way OEMs conduct their business and measure success. They need to move for performance KPIs based on units sold to performance KPIs based on uh, the value of their customer uh, portfolio. That, that's really a significant change and we can imagine metrics uh, based on the average revenue per user, something very similar to what we see in the telco uh, industry. The next step is even more radical and maybe the, the end of the, the automotive world as we know it today, and that's the, that's the robot taxi. That's the development of fleets of standardized, shared, autonomous uh, passenger modules. This may sound as a long-term prospect, but, but maybe not. Uh, first, the DOT projections in the US show that uh, as soon as 2024, the number of miles traveled in uh, autonomous shared cars will be higher than the number of miles traveled in uh, classical and privately owned uh, cars. So in 2024, is not that far. And you'll see um, similar projections in the last uh, KPMG's Global Automotive Exec Survey. Uh, we highlight that 73% of automotive exec that we have surveyed are convinced that traditional public transport solutions could be replaced by robot taxis in 10 years. So good news, uh, the cars will be, still be in the roads and, uh, in 10 years. And the question for me is whether the auto companies want to become transportation operators and uh, what this prospect could mean to their business. And that's a key question I'll ask to the execs I met at the show. Thank you.